we started losing the fish one by one we had lost so many fish by noon we had lost over 35 fish and this was at uh, four and a half months hi everyone this is naturally afro sis from fuse farms i like to do videos on natural hair and farming you guessed it right i'm a learner farmer so in this video we're going to be talking about fish farming so this video has been long overdue i wanted to do this video for two months now i promise that i was going to give you some detail on what had happened to our fish i woke up one morning first thing i got a call from the farm that there was a problem in the night and our fish in the first pond the biggest fish were throughout the night gasping for air and by the time it was morning they were exhausted and um, we started losing the fish one by one we had lost so many fish I'm not an aquaculturist if there's such a term. I am not in any way a guru. I'm also just learning. Uh, what I'll be sharing is from my experience on what happened. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you how we lost over 78 fish in one pond and I'll be explaining the reasons why it happened. I'll also be giving you solutions or the things that we did to stop the fish from dying. Let's get into the video. Problem so. number one was that the pond was over fertilized and how do you tell if your pond is over fertilized? So you can tell this by the color of the pond. Yes, it's supposed to be green but the green is supposed to be very light like so as opposed to this color that we have here. Our pond was dark green, which meant there was too much plankton. The purpose of plankton is to bring in oxygen during the day and also to provide food to the fish. But in the night, when the plankton is too much, it means that plankton starts competing for oxygen with the fish and therefore the fish ends up starting to gasp for air. So that also leads to stress. And it's not like we did not know that that was going to create a problem if you can see from the level of the pond we had actually drained and we were putting in some more water but because we're using solar the sun was not on our side so there was very little pressure and therefore we did not manage to make the water rise to the level that it was supposed to be and by the time it was 18 o'clock the water stopped because the sun went and now we were stuck so in the night now around 22 the fish started gasping it was so bad i was not there but i was just told that the whole pond had fish gasping for air at the top i wish i was there to kind of see what they were seeing i would have taken pictures and all problem number two the stability is too high this is when the water is looking cloudy or muddy or when a fish tries to swim you see a lot of debris showing from the bottom it comes up or the mud and kind of uh, like the fish poop settles down it becomes all muddy and stuff like that and then sometimes it's also the suspended particles and probably even the plankton itself so it makes the pond very cloudy and the test usually is to dip your hand and then you move your fingers if you're not able to see your fingers then you know that the turbidity is not good or the turbidity is high this is usually a problem because it means the amount of the sunlight going into the pond is not enough as a result we might have reduced photosynthesis which also leads to reduced oxygen in the pond and we know when there's no oxygen in the pond the fish will gasp for air also the fish might not even be able to see properly and the fish will have reduced appetite and the gills might also be clogged by the dead the debris and the fish might eventually die so the question you might ask is how did uh, the debt accumulate when you look at our drainage pipe here at the top we have a net 
but it's very fine let me zoom out a little bit i'm sure you may not be able to see the holes it's a very tiny like tiny mosquito net size it was okay for us to use it for fingerlings i guess no one told us that we needed to change the size of the net to allow the fish poop debris and everything solid to seep through when draining but because those things were not going out for the whole four plus months our ponds were easily getting dirty the water was easily becoming dark meaning it was easily getting fertilized obviously most likely there was ammonia but i will not talk much about that because we did not have the water quality meter for us to definitely confirm that there was a little dissolved oxygen and there was a lot of ammonia hopefully in the near future we'll manage to get ourselves a water quality meter so everything we do is by observation number one we started aerating in order to improve the oxygenation in the pond solution number two was adding more water if you've noticed we have uh, two sources of water we had to close the borehole meant for cabbages so we sacrificed the cabbages to bring the water to the ponds and after some time the color of the water also changed To shoot this video, I used my iPhone 11 Pro, even for the sound. If you're interested, you can find it on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description down below.